Latinos Out Loud podcast. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? We outside, out west. Latinos Out Loud is in the building in Cali. California knows how to party. Yes, it does. And to start the party off, I'm so excited because our first LOL in LA guest, outside of the live event that we're doing on Thursday, of course, is none other than the founder of the Latino Filmmakers Network, Mylen Calienes, is next to me right now. My Len, it's kind of weird introducing you because it's like there's this invisible curtain here. So I'm like, let's bring her out. Oh, I'm she's here. already out. I'm here. She's on the couch right next to me. I, I'm just like super honored that I'm starting the party because I love starting the party. You're a party starter. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you start parties. I've been to your parties that you've started. Yes. Give me a hug. I'm so happy to see you. Very nice to meet you. Mm. I've known my land for a few years. I was gonna now. say we've known each other for a very, very long time. Can we talk yeah. about that? Help. Let's figure this out. Let's talk so, about it. Let's yeah, talk sure. about it. Where did I, lo- we meet? I love when the New Where York vibe comes to LA. Oh, I'm so New York. You know I that. No, but I love it. I love. I like. I need it. I was so excited to come out here. <laughs> Like to do this podcast because I need my New Yorkers here once in a while. You know that you guys feed me. You know <laughs> I've heard this. I've heard this note often, and I'm feeling a little used. You know what I'm saying? Like we're in a relationship, but it's okay. I don't mind it. Use me, okay. Yeah. And also the New Yorker just like explodes out of my pores. Yes. you know and what I'm I love saying? It. Yes. So okay, there's so much to talk about. But where did we first meet? I think we met at the New York Latino Film Festival. That's it. Yeah. What year? That I don't remember. Let's like. figure this out. Let's figure this out. Okay. Yeah. What were we? Was I red carpet reporting? No, you were doing comedy. It was probably like 2018 or something like that. Was that the year that I did the panel with yes. Oz Rodriguez and Mero and you Frankie Quinones? Yes. And she was- stood out to me. She stood out to me and I actually went up to her because I was like, oh my gosh, this, this girl is super freaking cool. You know? <laughs> I, I, you know what? We were at a movie theater. Yeah. Were we at the theater in at like the, the vestibule AMC, area? Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the top. That was so dope. Yeah. And ever since then. And Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford were like in the background. Yeah. <laughs> that Wait, I remember. There was another screening happening. They were there? No, 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 no. It was like a big ass poster of them. Oh it my was, God. I thought they were What's that movie that they life? did? I think Anna de Armas was in it. Um, but it was a big, I remember that poster just because I took a picture with that poster <laughs> <laughs> and I don't forget that because I met Ryan Gosling now here a couple of years ago and I have the best Ryan Gosling story. So like, that was like, I remember that. Can and you I tell us a little bit about the Ryan oh, Gosling gosh. story? I almost like want to put a pause <laughs> on Latinos out loud for a sec. Uh, but you, well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's a fun story and it happened in Los Angeles and you know, shout out to Eva Mendes, who's, you know, his partner. I have to shout out our girl Eva, right? Right. But pretty much uh, pre pandemic, there's this really hot cafe here where they shot movies and a lot of people go and I would go there to have like little meetings or just to eat breakfast once in a while. It's called called Cafe 101 or 101 Cafe, whatever. (laughs) And um, it's in Hollywood by the freeway. And I was there with a friend of mine that was visiting from Canada. And um, and yeah, and like we walk in. And she was the one that recognized Ryan Gosling right away, which he's Canadian, right? So like, she recognized him right away. I wouldn't have thought like Ryan Gosling being there like, you know, randomly. But because he's like Ryan Gosling, you know, he's this big yeah. mega star. And so um, she recognizes him. And then she told me that's Ryan Gosling. And all of a sudden we got like very girly, like, oh, my. How's my lipstick? So I don't think of my teeth. (laughs) And so we literally got the table like right across from Ryan Gosling. He was there like in a meeting. We, you know, we're very professional. I don't want to like interrupt anything, but we got it there just to at least like admire him. You know what I mean? From from a close distance, not really from afar. I mean, the next table is what, like 10 feet away? You know what I mean? But he totally like (laughs) felt our vibe because like this was us all the time. Like, <laughs> like my hair was like you know in a different <laughs> this whole week toast is so the good whole time, i was i was like at that time texting with a friend of mine that was cr- at that time working at the dga and i was telling her hey ryan gosling's here she's like oh my god keep him there i'm gonna go there for lunch <laughs> perfect spill your spill your so, coffee on him so, or something so so the, the weirdest thing happened, okay, because usually if, like, there's, like, this big star, you would think, oh, the star and whoever they're with, they'll walk out together, or the star will go- would walk out first, or whatever, 
Well, the other person that was there with him left, and he like stayed there by himself. By himself? Yes. And then my Alone? friend immediately gets up to go say something to him. And he gets a call, and she he noticed this, and then he gets a call, so she went back because she didn't want to bother him. And like, <laughs> after he was done with his call, he came up to us. Excuse oh, and me. And by the way, by that time, my friend made it from the DGA to eat lunch with us. Okay. He came up to us because he knew that, you know, we wanted to like approach him and stuff like that. And we, then we, we just started talking about how she's from Canada. And I started talking to him about movies, you know, sweet. and stuff like that. And like, you know, it was a really cool thing. And then like we went to the hotel next door. This sounds like so bad. Wait a minute. No, you went to the hotel next door with no. Ryan Gosling? Yeah. I yeah. love this story. <laughs> I love it even more now. After then what know, happened? My hair went into a different like hairstyle. <laughs> uh, we took Ryan to the hotel next door. Well, actually, you know, like Cafe 101 is like connected to this really cute Hollywood hotel. So we walked out the, the um, you know, to that area and the and, and like we took a picture with him. But like the waitress knew what was going on. She ran outside. She's like, I'll take the picture. And she like took the picture of all of us. And I remember just like posting that picture and every like everyone thought that it was like fake. They're like, no, that's not Ryan. Photoshop. Not, we had to find another picture that the waitress took that he like slightly moved to his face to show people that he was really Ryan Gosling. That's really you know? sweet. But, but he, he was so nice. He came up to you guys. He, yeah, because he, he you know, saw what was going on. It was very cool. And, yeah, and you yeah, know, like yeah. he's super talented. He's Ryan Gosling. Um, he's with Eva Mendes, who we love, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But hot. Um, it's really mm -hmm. hot. But um, you know, it just makes the person even much more um amazing. You know, when they're so down to earth like that, and you know, so giving like that, because you know, he didn't have to do that. He's well, you know. Speaking of giving, I want to yeah. bring it back to your organization. Okay. Latino Filmmakers Network is very giving. Yes. You have several programs, incubator programs. You do a lot of work with Sundance. I would love for you to tell the Eloeleros exactly what Latino Filmmakers does. And then if you could recap Sundance, because you're like off of Sundance. You put a lot of work in this Fresh off festival. of Sundance. Tell us everything, girl, please. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Latino Filmmakers Network started in 2015 at the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, that that's where it, I founded uh, the organization because of the lack of representation of our Latino community uh, and also going to Sundance myself for so many years as a filmmaker and our community not being there represented. Uh, it kind of blew up from there. So this is why I've kept this is our ninth year, by the way. Wow. Ninth year. That Amazing. Next year, 10 years. Um, yeah. So kind of like, you know, going out there and wow. representing and, and bringing community together and all that stuff. Uh, but Latino Filmmakers Network is about it, it is about bringing community together. It is about education. It is about creating. It is about representation because representation matters right uh we're a nonprofit organization um and and it's it's important you know to have organizations like latino filmmakers network especially here in hollywood yes. right um for sure where we need more visibility of our community and underrepresented storytellers and since then Aside from Sundance, you know, we've done a lot of stuff to not only help educate the community and bring the community together uh, and, and, and bring new storytellers up and, and storytellers that have been around for a long time, uh, but, you know, to, to bring that proper representation, not only to Hollywood, but like we've been to New York, we've been to, you know, other states in the, we, you know, we, we, we started something in Atlanta, you know, we've been all over nationwide bringing that visibility and that representation and it's just like grown since 2015 you know you're building it okay yeah. let me ask you because you do stellar events i've yeah. been to a few of them and i love how you mobilize the creatives you bring us together and every single event i've walked away with at least one key connect one yeah. new net you know a new person that i can like reach out to and build with i think that's really key yeah. so it also takes a very specific kind of organization to again mobilize these latinos the ones that are hungry the ones that are like how can i help you instead right. of how can you help me me you know everybody who comes to your events are those kinds of people how yeah. can we help each other how can i help you and that's very important like the other thing we started at sundance was uh 
um, invited, inviting selected filmmakers nationwide to be part of our filmmakers house. So we, we select about up to 10 filmmakers every year that we actually host at Sundance. You know, they're part of our community there. They get to experience Sundance with us. You know, they get to be a part of it. They get to connect within, you know, within each other. Right. Uh, and then experience all of our events and stuff like that and experience Sundance. Uh, but I feel like that that's key because with that and with the new normal reading series that we've done for so many years that not just brings Latinos together, but uh, all the other underrepresented communities together, black, Native American, Asian, South Asian, you know, like it is so important. I feel like. Yeah, we're here. We're you know, meet uh, representation in media and in entertainment matters. And, you know, telling studios and, and telling people, listen, you know, this has to be properly addressed. You know, we cannot just be in a box. We're not just stereotypes. But I feel that it starts with us. I feel that it starts with community. I feel that it starts with people coming together and creating our own stories. We cannot be sitting around waiting for people. We have to work with each other. We have to bring each other up, build each other up, but also we have to create our own stories together. And with programs like the New Normal Reading Series that um, Latino Filmmakers Network also has had for years, out of that alone, so many storytellers have come out of there, building together and bringing up new stories and new stuff and, uh, and, and just other people bringing the elevator down too and, and bringing yeah. new people up. And that's how it should be, you know? I love that elevator uh, picture in my yeah. head. Exactly. Send it back down and then bring those people back up. I love that. And you know, by the way, you don't have to be a celebrity to do that. Right. You don't have to be a celebrity because people have this idea. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, yeah, celebrities should do that or, or people at a level that they bring down the elevator because they're there and they could do it and they could probably give someone an opportunity. But you don't have to be a celebrity to bring an elevator down or to give somebody a hand. Absolutely not. You know? I agree with that wholeheartedly. I always say if you can move the needle any tenth of a degree or a whole point or I mean, we're not trying to break the Richter scale. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But at least try mm -hmm. and you You'll be surprised at how many people you'll touch or impact by just moving it one tenth of a degree. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about some action here. No pun intended. You know what I mean? Lights, camera, action. Um, but I want to know. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to bring Rachel. those jokes to. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know you were going to bring those jokes to Los Angeles. I oh, mean. look. I mean, I'm going to bring my New York comedy wherever they give me she's, a microphone. She, she's like, um, um, what should I talk about in California? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I mean, um, I could talk in my California voice. So, like, guys, I want to hear more about the Latino Filmmakers Network. Um, Wait a sec. <laughs> wow. I want to hear. <laughs> okay, so. Bet. Okay, so um, you'll do California, and I'll, like, um, well, no, I'm doing California more like that. I'll do. Oh my gosh. I'm from New York. <laughs> Let's walk the walk and talk the talk. Let's, like, switch places here. Okay. Like, we'll switch places now, okay? Right, I'm going to see you in, like, two hours because i got to take the 405, and it's jam-packed right now, all right? So, like, I don't know. I'm just going to vibe out to some oh Steve Harvey, and then I'll see you in, like, an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, listen. You're, you're doing the whole like California dude thing, right? Yeah, like, the surfer that's, dude. That's thing. what I'm. That's do they still exist, or is that like so like? Yeah, 80s. Go to Malibu or like you know down the coast, and you'll find them there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about like let's just say I'm filmmaker. Yeah. Que si yo que. I want to get involved. What do they have to do to get involved with the Latino Filmmakers Network and potentially end up at Sundance? So uh, definitely follow us on social media, Instagram at Latino Filmmakers. Uh, you can find all of the, our, our other social media on there. But definitely join our newsletter uh, on our website. Check out our website, latinofilmmaker.org. And also check out our digital program that's on there from Sundance. So you can see everything that happened on there. Uh, and also kind of like, you know, um, <clears throat> see what we put together when we're out there, right? Like we had Eugenio Del Best over our filmmaker's house. Love which that. And he was amazing, you Shout know. Shout out to Trepas. Talk about someone. Yeah, who, yeah. yeah so talk about someone who's freaking amazing that like, you know, really represents when it comes to the community. He has a, such a golden heart, mm -hmm. you know. So um, <clears throat> check out the program. 
that we put up for Sundance on there, but join the newsletter. It's free. You know, check out the newsletter. Um, follow us. Check out the newsletter. Check out, look out for events. You know, aside from like joining events or registering for stuff, I would say what's important is to show up, you know, yes. because this is, you know, we tend to remember, you know, it's great to have talent. It's great to be working towards, right, um, what you're trying to do. But it's very important to show up, especially in this industry, which is about like who you know or connecting or whatever, because people remember that. You know, um, and it's not just showing up to like meet people like me or, or other people in the organization or whatever. It's showing up and supporting to other support people. support the artists. You know, support yeah. other, like, mm-hmm. like when I have events, like, you know, and, um, and people go to these events and they're participating. That's one thing. It's amazing. But what really stands out to me is when that person that participated in that event also shows up for the other events to like support the other people that are participating like that stands out you know or like going to the events of the people that they met at your event right that's also how you expand build that relationship you know what i mean and like and you're also and and also for me it's very important to have a good vibe you know because you could be the most talented person in the world and i also for when i produce stuff you know, I look into that a lot. You could be super talented, but if you have like a bad vibe or you're going to be like bringing the low energy to the room, I'm not going to want to work with you. I'm not going to want you in our house. I don't want people that bring the energy down, you know, so it's very important. Yo, I was just in Utah not too long ago for a premiere and I had a day off. So I went to go experience the mountain. And there, yeah, there was no film festival happening at the time. And how was that? It was empty and it was awesome. Nice. You know, there was a lot of snow on the ground. It's I, beautiful I snow. ate at that restaurant on the top of the hill with the yeah. best burger in town. What's it called? The something joint or something? I don't remember. Was it on Main Street? It was all the way up the mountain and there was no cell phone service. I I've always that. wondered how it is without Sundance there. Like, I kind of want to go to Park City it when like beautiful. nobody's there just to experience that. I walked around the grounds it's by beautiful. myself and I took it all in. I call Park City like the little um, neighborhood underneath the Christmas tree because that's what it looks like. <laughs> like yes, the village with the like, like the that's ice the village under and the road like honestly, and the goats passing by. <laughs> I feel like I don't celebrate the holidays really because I'm preparing for Sundance so pretty much me being at Sundance I'm like oh wow winter wonderland it is I'm a winter wonderland even yeah, though yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm working my ass off I'm like I'm celebrating Christmas now yay yo my Len, you just gave me the <laughs> ultimate visual that I have got to share with you in the Eloeleros yes. yo I don't know if you could feel me on this but Abuela Tona rest in peace she was my mother's stepmother right okay her village under the Christmas tree. She had a two bedroom apartment on uh-huh. the Upper West Side, and we would go there. That was one of the Christmas stops, you know. Yeah. We'd celebrate Hanukkah, and then the next night we'd make it to the Dominicans uptown. And that village just expanded every year. Like one year, we couldn't even fit in the living room. Like <laughs> it was so expensive. We were like stepping around Jesus's like you know manger, well, and like I swear that she put a Seven Eleven in the Christmas village. I'm like, yo, this is there's no way that Jerusalem or the Beth him look like this back in the day bro also you're taking up the whole goddamn apartment i can't even get to my gifts they're on the other side of you know the we're, we're also farm. talking about a latino family here right why so. do we get so into the nativity scene is my question we love that nativity scene we love it it's, it's a little too expansive anyway yeah um so i want you to shout out anything you got going on right now yeah. i know you said you're producing something yeah. right now yeah yeah yeah. taking classes well yeah. what you're doing a lot right now so um yeah so you know these past few years i've also been producing a lot uh movies made by talented latino filmmakers uh in the industry just to also show continue to show that we have talent in our community uh right now the next movie that i've been working on is called shadow of the sun it was actually actually shot in Venezuela uh, by a filmmaker that lives here who literally crossed the border into Venezuela to shoot this movie because he's originally from Venezuela and it was just in him that he wanted to shoot a movie over there and he is a risk-taking filmmaker and he just like went and he did it and it came out beautiful and right now we're like kind of like finishing up with the post you know so it's called shadow of the sun look out for it um and then aside from that, I'm also have been I've been getting back to my roots of writing and directing and 
and all that what? stuff uh you know getting back to that uh i i, I did um a couple years ago i did uh um a project that did very very well and and it's still been like you know out there kind of like doing an international run on its own in a sense Congrats. right uh, it's called the three bilinguals it's about a mexican a cuban and a puerto rican that meet at the reading of their father's will oh. you know so it's a comedy i you know is a social message uh that um that i think would make like a a, a really good like tv series after it did its so premiere and stuff like that like that's people are like oh this because of characters are so much fun it's kind of like i would say out of everything that i've seen out there for me like i connect with the things that i write even like a lot to like shit's creek so that's more like in that vein but i did it before shit's creek came out uh, so okay, so. <laughs> so you know but it's like in that vein because you know the mexican brother lives in 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 L la the cuban sister in Miami and the Puerto Rican brother in New York and he also dresses in drag Aye. and they all meet for the first time in Wyoming for the reading of their father's will where they also meet for the first time uh their Caucasian stepmother fresh out of plastic surgery and they all have to kind of like live together get to know each other in order to get this inheritance you know so it's, it a, it's, fun. it's, it's a very fun project yeah. you know what I mean so um, congrats so you know uh but then like um I've also been working on a feat. I want my, my thing is I love movies, you know, and my thing is getting back to making movies and of my own. And I've been working on a also a feature length film movie that I've been developing. But right now I've been also doing a lot of research. I do a lot of research when I write, you know, well, so. give us a little tidbit. What's some of the research that you're doing? Uh, well, this movie in particular, uh, takes place in Miami and London, right? Uh, and there's, so there's a American Latino family and there's a British family. So um, a lot of that research pertains more to the British family that I'm developing, the characters that I'm developing and like the culture and all that stuff. Um, the core of the story came from something personal, but a lot of the stuff that I write uh, is very character driven, has a lot of fun characters and there's always a social message. And, you know, I've already been, I've developed the, the American Latino family already. So I know the characters are very rich. So, you know, the, the British is not like my culture, but I have a friend that I grew up in in Miami and that's how it all came to me too that he's been living in London for such a long time right and that was part of the inspiration behind that and also part of the uh, the other part of the inspiration is since I lean towards comedy is that I love the British humor the dry wittiness oh, yes so I feel like yeah. that dry wittiness with like my humor with this American Latino family and like the concept of the story is just like a blast you know and so um, well, I look forward to laughing at your yes, film I mean I'm not that good at doing that like you are but yeah I hope that you laugh or maybe not I'm just really internally not York, whatever really. <laughs> the New York accent is fake <laughs> yes well I love that yes. that's great I just that's don't Great. sound intelligent. I'd, I'd rather sound quite dumb. I think sounding dumb is sexy. <laughs> oh, we're going to I wrap this it. interview. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, wow. Mylen Calienes of Latino Filmmakers Network. Drop the handles. Let them know how to follow you and shit. Uh, do you have like a jingle that that you guys use you for this one? thing? Because like we could end it like you just tell me the rhythm and like I'll pretend like I'm dancing to that jingle. So well, we it would probably it. be <laughs> que lo que, right? So let's get into the que lo que right now. <laughs> Un, dos, tres, vamos a que lo que, que lo que, que lo que. That was a very bad rendition. <laughs> que lo que, que lo que, que lo que. That was a very bad rendition, a big re a bad rendition of the que lo que song. Okay. <laughs> So, Mylen, que lo que, tell us your handles, how to follow you, or, you know, I mean, you could tell us how to follow you physically, where you live, or no. you can tell us no. how to follow you on social media. I'm down for either. Well, I, in LA. I, 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 I love Hollywood and I love what I do, but I like keeping my private life private. That's a good idea. There's a lot of crime <laughs> out there these days. Yeah, you don't want to no give out your address. No paparazzi's for me, but... No. What about mamarazzi? I know, it's not, that was a bad joke. Well. It's nothing. <laughs> Just move on. I, I, I'm, a, I'm opposed to the paparazzi as well, but I welcome the mamarazzi. You know what I'm saying? Right. As long as they're willing to feed me, I guess. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, but Latino Filmmakers Network... Instagram at Latino Filmmakers, um, Twitter, LFN 
org, uh, Facebook, Latino Filmmakers Network, website, latinofilmmaker.org. And what about the MySpace and the Mi Gente and the, no, that's just Pasao. No, you know? that's a, but you know your, you know your handles. You've got a handle on your handles. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been your girl, Rachel La Loca, Latinos Out Loud in Full Effect, <laughs> LOL in LA, okay? And Go have Google fun that. in LA, by the way. I, I am loving it. We're it. here for just a few hours, as you can tell by the bags under my eyes. There's more bags under my eyes than there was at the carousel at LAX today. But you know what? We're here. We're doing it. I'm so thankful for you to come to wherever we are i'm not gonna say where we are um but thank you for coming no, wherever to, this place is wherever this place is because what, what we saw at airbnb is not exactly where we are it's okay. a great screen right this is a great screen <laughs> but we oh, are in the, are we really California. in la or did i fly to new york hmm, we'll find out in the next episode <laughs> Ooh, a cliffhanger. thank you for coming on the yeah, show thank i'm you. so proud of everything thank you i've been seeing the evolution you know, just as an event goer and a supporter. And I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Keep it up. And thanks for what you do for us. Thank you. I appreciate you know it. You give a lot of people chances and opportunities, probably more so than you think. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. That's, it must it, be. It, it is. Full. It's. Yeah. You know, um, it definitely this is why I do it, because that's part of what my soul is. You know, I, I am a, a big giver. I like creating positive like I, I feel like like on earth we should all be creating something positive you yes. know what I mean like we're all on a journey or whatever but we should yes. leave behind something positive right always and yeah you know along the way I'm not gonna lie you know uh you you do go through a lot right it's not easy it's not easy right um and even when you do good it's still very it's still um very hard right yeah. uh but uh what m keeps me going and 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 putting my time into it and all that stuff is that yes it does fulfill me to do something positive and to do something good and giving for the world and for the community paying it forward yeah. is a very overused term but it's such you're paying yourself with that, you know what I'm saying? And moving people forward at the same time. Kind of like what we do here at Latinos Out Loud. We like to say that we move people forward while making them laugh. We'll bring the comedy, but interviewing people like yourself, Mylin, helps move this community forward. Because we're educating them on the opportunities so that, look, it's hard out there. Hard out there as an entertainer, as a writer, as a filmmaker. It's not like there's a tree of opportunities in our backyard saying, hey, Latino, oh, you want to make a film? Come on, let's go to Hollywood. It doesn't work that way. But it's because of programs like yours that it gives us a path or at least some sort of conduit to success. And, you know, don't forget that um, I feel like it also starts in the entertainment industry, in media, TV and film if we're not represented in media TV and film we're not represented in the United States of America word we need our voice represented word you know, properly word. right not as a stereotype we need to be seen and we need to be heard so it's very important I like to tell people live out loud and if you're Latino live Latino out loud alright on that note we out peace